We're starting to see so many meat substitutes on the market. And while a product like this can help us cut down on meat, many say that these meat-like substitutes are basically just processed foods. So are these meat substitutes healthy or harmful? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks so much for being here today. My name is Heya, I'm a nutrition science PhD, and on this channel we talk about vegan nutrition, lifestyle, and materials. If you want to learn more about these things, hit that subscribe button below. Today I'm going to share with you a study that actually put Beyond Meat to the test. It's called the SWAP Meat Trial. Very clever acronym. This was a study done at Stanford University and it was a randomized controlled trial. This is considered the gold standard way for us to measure the effect of an intervention and actually determine cause and effect. The objective of this trial was to compare the effects of eating plant-based meat, in this case Beyond Meat, to animal meat and measure their effects on health and the microbiome. This was a crossover study. So what that means is each person goes through both conditions. This is very, very powerful because that means that each person actually as their own control. Each intervention or phase was eight weeks long. So it would be eight weeks of Beyond Meat and then eight weeks of Animal Meat or vice versa. Participants were instructed to eat at least two servings of the meat that they were assigned to in each phase and otherwise keep other aspects of their diet as consistent as possible. One thing to note here is there wasn't a washout period, which usually you'd have to basically wash out any effects that would have carried on from the previous phase. But this led to really interesting findings, which we'll come on to. Both types of meats were provided to the participants and they were allowed to choose from a range of different meat type products. Note that the Beyond Meat products varied slightly in formulation. Mainly they're made of pea or soy protein isolates, along with canola oil, sunflower oil, and coconut oil, along with other ingredients. Blood samples were taken, microbiome was sequenced, and even their satisfaction and any gastro symptoms were measured. So what were the results? 36 people completed both phases of the study. Let's look at what happened to their diet. Compared to the animal meat condition, the Beyond Meat condition led to less saturated fat and more fiber. And these differences were specifically because of the products that they were eating. So the rest of their diet stayed pretty stable. This is pretty promising because saturated fat from meat can lead to poorer health outcomes and then fiber is so important for health and also the microbiome. Protein and sodium stayed the same. Now for the health markers that were measured. First, let's look at TMAO. TMAO is an emerging risk factor for cardiovascular disease and other chronic conditions. And red meat specifically has precursors to TMAO, and these are carnitine and choline. What was found in the study is that TMAO was significantly lower in the beyond meat condition compared to the animal meat condition. But there's something really interesting here, and that is it depended on whether they had the animal meat first or the beyond meat first. And this effect was only observed if they had the animal meat first. Here is where there is an advantage that there wasn't a washout period because if there was, perhaps they wouldn't have observed this effect. To explain this, the authors draw on other studies that showed that when vegetarians were fed precursors to TMAO, they didn't actually produce TMAO. And it suggests that there's this vegetarian microbiome that's resistant or resilient to producing TMAO. And maybe in this study, being on the plant meat for eight weeks helped participants to build up that resistance and maybe not produce TMAO producing bacteria in their gut. But their microbiome analysis didn't actually show a difference, so it's still really difficult to tell or explain why this was happening, and they point out that this is an area that needs more research to understand. In terms of other changes observed, LDL cholesterol was also significantly lower in the Beyond Meat condition. This makes sense because this plant-based product has lower saturated fat, more fiber, and it's a plant protein, all of which have been shown to be able to reduce LDL. They also found that weight was significantly lower in the Beyond Meat condition. In terms of other health markers that were measured, there was no significant difference. Interestingly, participants seemed to be just as satisfied eating the Beyond Meat products as they were the animal meat products. In terms of gastro or gut symptoms, they were pretty much the same in both phases. They just reported fewer bowel movements daily while they were on the animal meat phase. Note that this trial was funded by Beyond Meat as disclosed, but the study staff took steps to make sure that they were reducing bias. So for example, the statistics was done by a blinded third party, someone who had nothing to do with the trial, and also the lab staff actually doing the analyses were blinded to 
which intervention participants were on. So overall, in these generally healthy adults, swapping out animal meat for Beyond Meat led to improved cardiovascular disease risk factors, including TMAO. And interestingly, people were just as satisfied eating these products. In light of the need for us to reduce our intake of red meat, both for the planet and also for our health, these plant-based alternatives could give us a healthier option. This is a new area of research and these products haven't been yet extensively studied. But this study shows us that there weren't observed negative health effects when it comes to cardiovascular risk factors. One thing to keep in mind is this research really only extends to Beyond Meat products because we see a lot of different types of ingredients and formulations and types of fats across all these different products and different companies as well. My personal take is these are very useful transitional foods as we all try and reduce our red meat intake, both for the health of our planet and also for our own health. And if you're completely plant-based, then these are fine to have once in a while and okay to enjoy and they're fun foods. And as much as we can, we should all try as much as possible to include into our diet whole plant foods and going for a variety as much as we can. I'd love to hear from you. Do you use these products? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.